Ladies, gentlemen, bodies of water, welcome to the Alchemy Lab. My name is Lee, and tonight I'm playing Kalthar. My name is Carl, and I'm still playing Gracchus. And my name is Matt, and I am still on my phone because Zoom is still terrible. Welcome to the Shattered Lands, Streets of Mia. Um, part two of case number 11, yet to be named. Um, so, last time, there was a, uh, well, we caught the end of a battle at a warehouse where uh, Gracchus and Calthar and Charon's various uh, foot soldiers smashed up a warehouse, fucked up some people, made a guy poo himself a few times, and just generally caused some mayhem. And you've got some useful intel, gentlemen, potentially. Um, so... Who would have been reading that? Uh, to be honest, I'd probably given it to Ender. Okay. Just given okay. given that he seems to be very much uh, a man whose fingers are into many, many pies, he might be better at pulling the hidden information out of that sort of stuff than me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he's been pouring over that stuff. So this is, um, we're going to say this is a couple of days later. Um, you've got quite a few papers. Um, and you've been waiting for something to kick off from the Delanos, maybe some kind of counterattack, but it has not come yet. Um, you, um, you're sort of, you're in the, uh, on, so you're on the upper level. You're kind of overlooking, as you did before the party, you're overlooking some of the, the chats as they uh, go about their business. There is a new bartender in the place. Um... We don't talk about what happened to the old one. What about Boise? About... No sign of Boise. Still. If they've killed, if they've killed Boise, I swear to God, I'm going to burn them down even more than was before. Goodness. Um, so, uh, what are you talking about? Are you talking about anything? I suppose probably not. Uh, Gracchus is pretty singularly focused on what's coming. He's waiting for Ender to give him information. Although, is the pr do we still have our prisoner? Did we keep? Him? <laughs> we... I forgot about him. I mean, I can, okay. I can, I can tend to him still. Yeah, oh, but okay. So he he hasn't been in much condition to sort of say anything. He's been going between sort of catatonic and. Kind of babbling incoherently, he's sort. You feel like his his mental state has sort of broken a little bit from either hit on the head or the abject terror, which he just to let you in on that, he rolled a natural one. Oh no! Uh, to resist <laughs> that, um, so he is just like a babbling. All you have, all you have from him, is the one word he managed to say, which was "gond." Gond. And aside from that, there's really nothing. there's really nothing. You could just send him back as a message. Uh, I was going to give him one to send back, but I don't think he's going to be able to remember it. So, yeah, Pin it have one him. of the men, have one of the guys take it out to the tear, drop him outside the house, let them see what's coming for them. The fuck does he mean with Gond? Does that mean anything to either of you? I can roll for it, but all of my intelligence skills are minus two. So. <laughs> make both of, both of you make religion checks. Yeah. Oh no, that's my one. That's got one. <laughs> to be fair, you're a paladin. I just hope that has something. Yes, that was a good roll as well. Nineteen. I think my religion is nil. That's going to be my yeah. only good intelligence yeah. Calvar ever makes ever. Fourteen. Considering I have no bonuses, I'll take that. Um, you've both heard of Gond. Gond is a god. He is the god of smiths, the gear smith. Huh. He has many other names. Now, what he meant by that... Maybe he thought you were Gond? I mean, perhaps. You are a seven-foot-tall walking machine to most people. Yes, yeah, not the... Uh... God, I 
used to oath to, but perhaps. Yeah. Send him back to the Delanos. Maybe he'll help terrify some of the men. Maybe he'll start spouting some shit about how the gods are with us. Um, is this something a paladin can do? Check him with the gods and be like, yo, or can they do it with <laughs> their, own, their own god? Because the thing is, I don't think I, I have their a own. god anymore. I don't think you I don't have one. one. No, <laughs> but you're a breaker. Ah, gentlemen. He, he seems to appear next to you. He pads and very quiet. How the fuck do you keep just doing... You know, never mind. Never mind. Well, keep your ears peeled. I am very quiet. That's, That's the thing. Us. He's lighter. Nah, fair point. Sorry, and uh, what, uh, found something? Um, <laughs> I wish I had better news, gentlemen. Um, well, the uh, the papers that we have are, well, largely um, bollocks. There's nothing really on them that gives anything meaningful to what you're looking for, which is where the haze is being delivered. Can I... When it's being distributed. Can Although, I do a history check and see if I can remember any codes that they might have used to try and obfuscate information? Go on. It's probably not really good, but... Yeah, never mind. I clearly don't, because that's a six. Okay. Oh, sorry, um, they probably would have changed the codes when I left. There are some uh, references to... Um, a benefactor and a large gentleman. A big guy, you might say. But nothing concrete. Benefactor would make sense. From what they were talking about, it sounds like they had money coming in or support coming from one of the higher tiers, so... Mm. <sighs> Do you remember either of these names, Carl? Mean nothing to me. No, no, no. Carl, not Gracchus. Do you remember? Oh, I, I, I remember the names. But no, but perhaps from when you were in Raven. Gracchus would. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I so mean, Gracchus, the... would, Gracchus would regardless, because you mentioned them in. Um, I'm pretty sure we mentioned them in uh, Case Nine. Yeah, he'd, he, I think he'd know the benefactor at least. The, the two guys, it, those, those two were told in Raven. The big guy, you're not. The big guy, maybe not. Actually, no, benefactor, ben yes. The big guy, benefactor, maybe. yes. Big guy, not. Because I think it's a benefactor who was the one who sent the guys after Cassius. It seems. Benefactor does ring a bell. From what I understand, it's the person who's been hunting Cassius. What about this big, this big guy? Anything there? <sighs> Maybe, but um, not really. I mean, if you're talking about the benefactor, then I guess it's probably somewhat at the same level as him. Perhaps. Perhaps. Um, you have any contacts you could reach out to about the names? About the benefactor and the big guy? I mean, I'll I'll have a look. I'll have put my ear to the ground. We'll see. Appreciate I know it. that those. I do know that those names are not ones that you want to um, utter too loudly in the wrong place. Uh, well, I don't intend to utter them too loudly. But if they want to get involved with the Delanos, then that's another problem entirely. Hmm. What about your uh, your chat? Anything from him? The, Bits the and pieces. Uh... Yes, he was, in, he was in bits and pieces, but I was wondering about your uh, information. Nothing useful? Only thing he's brought up is Gond, which might be him referring to what he thought Calthar was, so... Ah, so we have bugger all to go on then, is what you're telling me. Seems that way. Well, 
fuck. Pretty much. Although I'll take burning down one of their fucking warehouses and throwing that shit over to the side as a victory for now. I suppose. From downstairs, um, you hear a bit of squabbling between a familiar voice and one of um, uh, uh, Charon's chaps. No, I know, I know, I know, big fella. I know, uh, I know, um, Gracchus. I know him. I swear I know him. Let me in. Let me in, you. Let me in, you. I'm his driver. All right. His fucking driver. You recognise the voice of Axel P. Advent. You're uh, a character who I made up um, when and he was first. He's now making an appearance. <laughs> now he's now he's back again. Back once again with the Renegade Master. Yeah, there is. <laughs> um, so, are you going to fucking let me in? Are you going to let me in? Boys, let him in. Keep your hands off me fucking jacket. I know it's a shit jacket, but keep your hands off it anyway. He, he walks in, he spies you at the, at the top, gives you a... Ah, gives you a bit of a wave. And he uh, comes up to the second floor. Mr. Lawbreaker, shakes your hands very vigorously. So, how can I help you? Oh, how can I help you? Well, well, I'll tell you right now. This was very, very uncanny. I got another fucking note from Duckmaster on Tier 7. They give me bloody notes all, all the time from the Dockmaster telling me that I need to clean up the balloon or I need to not park in a certain place or I need to do whatever I need to do, not park on the double yellow line or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah. Did gave them those fucking tickets. Well, this one, I get them so often, I know when they're different, but this one were different. And he pulls it out. This one here, this one here, has got a little note. So, it adds, right? It adds, you see here, and you peer at it. Mm -hmm. In the bottom corner, the bottom right-hand corner, is Foe Breaker, written very, very small. In Orcish. Right. This here, if you turn it over, Right? Mm -hmm. There and all. Now there is a tiny, tiny message. It is, it is, it just looks like a set of dots, basically. Now, you need a fucking, you need a magnifying glass to read that. I've got one here. All right? Have a look. I take it and sort of grab the paper and hold it and... It reads... Iron Eyed's God. Huh. Now, I, Iron Eyed, you would think meaning Brock Iron Eyed. Brock. He's a smith. Huh. Maybe Gondon's so sort of useless. What the hell? What are you pointing me to? I hand I pop I turn around to these two. <laughs> that small little message in the corner for me. Iron eyed God. Brock is a smith. Well, so Gond would then. So Gond would be his god. Would make sense. We'll go talk to him then. Back to tier six I go, I suppose. I suppose. I suppose so. Um, best let, uh, best let the big man know. I'll do that, and I'll meet you up there. Sounds good. If you hear anything from, <sighs> never mind. I'm sure they'll reach out. They know where to find me. Of course. We best be oh, off lads, I'll, I'll get you up there, lads. I'll get you there free. 
Thank you, Axel. Shall Have we take your present? He can come with me. He can come with us. We'll dump him off when we get out. Now, did you um, did you loot those two uh, guys or no? You didn't say you did. All right. Never mind. But I say, I'm going to okay. be honest. I think in, the, in that moment, Garak has cared more about the person and the files than the, than the bodies of the two people. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So, um, all right. Now, so you go out to um, the docks. You board um, Axel the Advent's really tiny, like, shit balloon. It creeps mightily under your weight, Alpha. Um, but it does slowly rise. Um, and after in probably twice the time, it reaches uh, tier six. Um, the tier six dockmaster walks up smugly, recognizes you, Gracchus, thinks better of it, then recognizes Kalfar, or doesn't recognize him, sees Kalfar, and just about faces and speeds back down the dock. Um, Brock Ironide, I believe, is still in the uh, Devilish Archive. Yep. Okay. Before we leave, Axel, would you do me a favour? That gentleman there, could you take him up to tier five and let him go? Uh, of course. Oh, of course I will. I... Anywhere specifically. I'd no, just docks. dump him out of the basket. You don't want to be... You don't want to hang around. You don't want to be wrapped up in this. At that, I right. flick him a gold coin. Right away, sir. Thank you. Keep saying. Don't, li don't linger. Kick him out and keep going. Will do. Um, the babbling um, doc, doc guy and Axel drift away up to tier five. Uh, and you guys head to the archive. The archive is still boarded up, um, still closed. There is a bit of graffiti on it, just some sort of like kids. There's a big drawing of his cock, cocks, <laughs> yeah, just cocks everywhere. Yeah, yeah, about right. Um, and uh, you walk in. Uh, I guess. Oh. Well, the door's boarded up, I guess you'd have to knock. Yeah, I, I knock pretty heavily well, to... I'll be going down to the uh, other entrance, won't I? Yeah, yeah, if you go around to the... The service entrance. The service entrance, I'll let you in when we get there. Mm -hmm. All right, the door opens, and, um, and you see uh, Rembrandt. Rembrandt opens the door. Ah, Rappers. good to see you. Come on um, in. Thanks, Rembrandt. I sort of take a look either side of me and walk in. Um, it is Brock who lets you in the tradesman's entrance, um, Kalfar. Mm -hmm. Hello. Ah, there you are, my metal friend. Come on in. I hope uh, Tier 7 is not treating you too shite. It's been okay. We had quite some fun. Mm -hmm. uh, in the main bar, you can see not only is Rembrandt returned here, Nock has also returned here. Knock hey! Nock sees you and gives you a big hug around the leg. I put my hand on his uh, on his back and sort of pat him soothingly. It's good, good to see you. Good to see you, Nock. Good to see you. Good, sir. And he runs around and uh, basically immediately just pours you a whiskey and puts it on the, on the bar. I just knock it back. <sighs> well, it's good to see both of you. You too. Although I don't think I don't think I've met uh, the big guy before. Ah, sorry, Kalfa, Rembrandt, Knock, Brock. I believe you've met. 
Everybody else? No. Calthar. Knock waves mm. at you. Hello. Hello. You'll, you'll forgive Knock Kenku, so he'll return speech with what he can. But he's well meaning and a good person. Good, sir. Brock did. I hold up the note that the with the little symbol, the little message on it. Did you send me this? I hand it over to him and end the looking glass. Uh, Iron Eyes God. No, I did not send you this. I would have sent it in a more sophisticated way than a piece of fucking paper. Well, it worked. Any ideas? Who sent it? Yeah, no idea. It's Orkish. My sorry, my name on the other side is in Orkish, so a couple of names come to mind. Well, it's a weird choice of Orkish. Well, the tribe on on Kalgargarak. I am if Surak is still there, he might be trying to get hold of me. But the choice of phrase throws me. Why would the name? You, why would the name you and us and say your god? That's the thing. I don't know who, uh, I don't know this Surak chap, so. Uh, It'll have to be someone I know and you know. Cassius, right? maybe. He'd know Orkish. What that man is doing is his business. I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm not Ender. <laughs> Probably just put that down. Mm. Iron Knight's God. Well, that would be gone. Yeah. Again. I gathered. Which is a strange yeah. coincidence because one of the people that uh, we encountered from the Delanos down there, the last word he said to us before his mind shattered into a tiny little pieces. Very interesting. Yeah. There is a temple to Gond on Tier 6. I was about to ask that very question. Hmm. Meet Why would they point you there? Meeting. Or Meeting. maybe it's where... Or it could be where some of the inf some of the haze is being sent from. Hmm. You ever been there? Aye, a few times, a few times. I've not been there, uh, well, you know, I stopped going there a little while ago, you know. Um, well, I had to go there through an intermediary. I know I keep up with my faith, you know. Um, one day I was going along there and I recognised a certain purple tiefling hanging about outside. So I decided to, uh -huh. you know, pray at home, you know. I'm just but that's certainly interesting. Hi. Because they've known where you were for a while from the sounds of it, so why would they be outside there unless they're protecting something? My thoughts exactly. Hmm. I feel like you may need to pay that place a visit, gentlemen. Sounds like a might. Now there's a wrinkle with that. Which would be? We don't let you have weapons in there. They are very, mm. very particular about that. And they can they can tell when you've got a weapon on you, even when it's concealed. If you're going in there, you're going to need to gear up. Which means you're going to need to stay here overnight while I sort you out. That works out. Well, uh, knock. I've got a special mission for you. Special mission. I need you to go to the guard barracks and request that uh, a Detective Swift, or Guard Captain Swift, should I say, comes by the archive. Tell him Gracchus is asking for him. Special mission. Detective Thank Swift. You. Detective Perfect. Swift, Gracchus, asking for him. Perfect. 
he scurries away. Uh, I'll attend okay. with you, young knock. I've changed my voice there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that was more travel I, I don't sleep as much, so yeah. I might as well go do something. Fair point. Hmm. All right. Um, all right. So you're going as well to, to Swift. Okay, cool. In the meantime, it's been a long time since I had a drink with you. It certainly has. And I could certainly use a very big drink. Well, you uh, roll a uh, roll a d6 for me, Carl. That is a one. Okay, so you. <laughs> So you um you have you only have one glass of, of whiskey of good rye and you savor it because it's good rye um, before Swift arrives with Knock and Counselor. Ah, right. Well, I wasn't quite expecting the Warforge, but he seems like a nice fellow. New friend. In fact, we've met. I think we have met. I, yes, we certainly have met. I wouldn't forget that. He wouldn't, but the DM would. Um, <laughs> well, what, what's going on? There's a possibility that the Lions are operating out of the Temple of Gond on this tier. I see. Hmm. Well... That's awkward. If they see me coming, they'll cut and run. If they see any of the guard coming, they'll cut and run. They'll probably do the same if I turn. Actually, they probably will not be trying to kill me, which is fine at this point. <sighs> they don't recognize Kalthar, but you're rather conspicuous if you don't mind me saying. Brock. I. Your faith is a faith of smiths, yes? It is indeed. What does these... What did this god make? What were his... Boons, his... Well, he made... He made many things. Did the he make things he... like me? I suspect... I suspect he may well have. His main achievement really is teaching the method of making to his followers. People or like perhaps, myself. Perhaps we just take me as a present. That's what I was about to think as well. I imagine they'd be very happy to see a seven foot tall automaton. And I'm very right. happy to lie down on the way there. That would be quite... Well, I didn't work. Right, but that's a, that's an issue as well, right? Because they're still going to recognise you, aren't they? Practice. Your your face is known to them. My face is known to them. If I went with you, Swifty here is a uh, is one of the guards, so they'll know him. Yeah, they'll know him. Hang on. Now I'm not doing it even before you start. Uh, run about I wasn't going to ask, remember, it. don't worry. It's not your war. Not mm. the Zabiga's special mission. It ain't his war either. Yeah, I'm aware, don't worry. This one knock is not for you. I tell you what, and... Let me, let me work my magic, alright? Let me work my magic. And you get a good night's sleep. I'll see you in the morning with some uh, toys. I like the sound of that. All right. Well, Swift, I'll keep you posted if you find anything. I mean, I assume you'll probably hear the fight kicking off if anything does happen, but please come running if you do. <clears throat> I will. And I'll bring a few... Uh, Boys Whoever you can trust. Indeed. 
Um, right, so. Um, Night Falls. Um, Calthar, do you uh, pick up a watch? Because you don't sleep, do you? I'm, yeah, I'm just otherwise conscious. I can't move. Okay. So cool. I'll be so, I'll be at the door. Cool. Make a perception check then. Lol. Uh, not not very good. Uh, nine. All right. So during the night, you hear a few kind of giggles and stuff outside, and you hear brush strokes against the wall of the uh, not more of cocks. the devilish archive. Um. You can't exactly tell what the brush strokes are, like what they're they're making. But I would like uh, this is what I'd like to do. So I hear this going on outside, mm-hmm. and as is just just barely audible, I'd like to speak in primordial. Okay. <laughs> just, just don't don't paint on the. The bar, go to bed, but obviously in primordial, primordial. that's going to sound fucking, fucking awful. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the devilish archive has got the name devilish for a whole new reason. <laughs> make it, make an intimidation check. That, that's much better. <laughs> and yeah, I, I thought that that was too high, but no, charisma's good, so that's eighteen. <laughs> You, you hear the brush stop. <laughs> and you hear them all just freeze, all the giggling stops. I go, you can go now, but in primordial. <sighs> yeah, you hear shrieks, and they just, and then you hear running. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, Gracchus. Years of that. He, he chuckles to himself and then goes. Back to his sort of oh, on again. Yeah. <laughs> Back to standby mode. Yeah. All right. Well, morning rolls around. Um, now, Calthar, you've been hearing noises from downstairs in the basement mm. all night. Um, in the morning, you uh, come downstairs, Gracchus. Um, what uh, so in the um, in the bar they've basically just been left like perishables so you've got like a breakfast of like beans and like spam whatever the D&D equivalent of spam is fine uh, I'll cook up whatever I can to create a, 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 de- a, mm. a decent bref- as decent a breakfast as I can Spog. well look Ren, Ren, ba- Ren- Spock instead of ham it's hog but yeah. Spog <laughs> That's canon now, Spog. No one likes Spog either. No. Uh, Rembrandt picks you up some fried Spog and beans. Um, and while you're eating that, um, Brock comes up from downstairs. He looks exhausted, but he's also his eyes are like sparkling. And he like tucks into a plate of Spog and be just ah. Uh, and when you're finished, he says, Calvar and Gracchus, please join me downstairs. After you. I get up from the chair and sort of crack my back and start following him. Behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen, bodies of water, two pages of A4. What is about to happen? <laughs> Behind okay. the scenes, Matt texted us midweek and was like, I've made the gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> I've just come this image of Matrix and I need guns. Yeah. Lots of guns. <laughs> All right. So, downstairs. Um, he has a table. And there are a number of objects on the table. He gestures to the first. He sort of stands behind it and gestures to the first. Now this, this is something, um, it's a little, it would be a little outside my wheelhouse, but uh, you know, the wife has been rubbing off on me a little. 
This here is a um, bar of chocolate. There are I don't. Six. I don't eat. Well, you are not going to be needing this, I don't think, if the plan that we mentioned last night is coming into effect. There are six squares of this chocolate. Once you eat a square, you will be able to disguise yourself as someone you have seen. Now, okay. I, now I warn you, this is, this is transfiguration magic, this is powerful shit. You're going to have to be careful later as you're, you know, excreting it, because you may shite a snake. Just don't panic if that happens. Actually panic slightly, because we don't know if the snake is venomous. Right, okay. This is certainly an interesting start to the morning. <clears throat> I, I don't do it. it is. I think I wish I could join you right now, Kalthar, to be honest. Yeah, you'll be scared. Maybe make it happen. You'll thank me when you're not recognised by Delano Gant. I'm aware, but the prospect of shitting a vet, potentially venomous snake, is somewhat disconcerting, Brock. I don't shit well, either. Yes. Well, you know, cross that bridge when you come to it. Yeah. The second, he points to the second item. Now, the second item is a little ball. Little metal ball. Um, chromatic, chromatic, shiny, lovely thing. Now, this here, you see there's a little button on the top there. Now, whatever you do, don't push it when you're around him. He just used to count that. Right. I call this little thing a dampening, dampening ball. Um, don't really know. It's a bit like, you know when you throw, when you, you, you wrap a, a rag in a bottle of liquor and you light it and it goes Yep. Yeah. This is a bit like that, except when you press that button, you have three seconds to throw the thing. Um, it will release a, an electric sort of a thunder discharge which should short out any automaton that comes close to you. Now, okay. that's important because you're going into the Temple of Gon, and they're likely to have automatons yeah. walking about. How, how close? The range on it is about 10 feet, so I would, uh, I would be very, very careful around uh, Mr. Calfar here. Understood. Now, these I'm particularly proud of. And he gestures to um, a couple of objects um, on the table here. This here, and he holds up the first one, it's like a tube, like a metal sort of tube. And he twists the top and a little nib comes out. He goes, this right here is a pen. Now, you know how quills, right? You have to dip it in the ink and all that shit. Mm -hmm. This is a little ball in the nib. And the ink is pressurised in a cartridge behind it. And you write with the pen, and I can reload the cartridge. It's very, very clever. A ballpoint pen, I call it. Now, okay. I'm quite proud of that, but I'm more proud of the fact that if you take the end of it off, and he takes the end of it off, and he shows you the inside, the inside is right. Now, the other thing we have here is a, uh, now he holds up another thing. This is a sort of, it's another tube, effectively. Um, and it's got a cigarette in the end. A bit like the thing that Ender was smoking, but without the ribbon. Mm -hmm. Now this is for, um, well, it's for cigarettes and cigars, even, if you're feeling fancy. Um, but neither of you smoke, so don't fucking use it like that. And he takes the cigarette out of the end and screws it onto the end of the pen where the pen was. Now, this right here is your barrel. This right here is um, something to make the shot that comes out of the barrel a fair bit quieter. 
It is effectively a pen gun and suppressor. Right. To, to fire this uh, thing, simply unscrew the back. He unscrews the back, holds up a bullet, puts the bullet in the back, screws it up again, and um, now that flask. I'm not too. Uh, I'm not too uh, precious about that flask. And he and there is a little pop, like a whispering pop, and the the flask. Now, this right here, this is, um, this is, well, I don't mind telling you, it's fucking fantastic. But, there are some drawbacks with it. This is not your typical firearm. So, I know you've gotten quite good with firearms, you can reload them pretty quick. This one's a bit more fiddly, requires a bit more uh, precision. Meta, the gun of feet does not apply to this uh, weapon. Also, Squeezing all of the, the sort of quiety stuff into the end means that it will degrade over time. And, um, well, the, which is sort of the material because I don't have that many shots for it. It requires a special kind of bullet. Only had time to make six of them. So you have six shots in here. Okay. Now, I will tell you now <coughs> the stats of this weapon. Oh, in the meantime. Okay. So, um, putting on my meta hat for a moment, it does 1d8 damage, but it is a plus 5 damage at base. So, it is effectively a plus 5 pistol that does a d8. Yeah. That is not including your um, proficiency modifier. Yeah. Proficiency modifier. Um, if you are unseen, let's say. Well, if your target is unsuspecting, this thing crits on an 18. Its critical damage is 4d8. And the plus 5 modifier is multiplied by 4. So, is effectively a, basically, assassin. Mm -hmm. um, 18 crit damage times 4. Yep. We'll go over it again post-game just to make sure it's all written down nicely. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> now, obviously, things are going to get a little bit uh, hairy, potentially. So, I decided to give you something a bit louder. The final item, he points to it. This right here is your typical walking stick. Wood lining, very fancy. But it is effectively an iron tube. He removes the handle at the top. He removes the sort of, you know, like the buffer thing at the bottom. Again, it is effectively rifled. Now, you load your standard shotgun shell into the back. And uh, to fire, and he pulls out a spyglass removes the end of the spyglass and shows you there is a firing pin in there. To fire, simply slide the barrel into this card and voila! And he goes <laughs> and several uh, beakers shatter in the corner. Fuck, I liked two of those. But they're replaceable, it's fine. It's fine. I'm happy to cover the cost or anything. Hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, so, uh, the end, the, so the spyglass, where the there's the firing pin, the rest of it sort of bends around to a sort of handle shape. Sort of a kind of a curve. Like that. Now, it's up to you who gets this. It is fucking loud, so uh, I recommend not sneaking around with it. Um, and it is, um, well, it is rather, rather special. So, um, that's all I've got for you, Jim. And now, it's certainly an impressive amount of work for a single night. Now, so to, uh, to clarify some more here. So, the shotgun rules are thus. 
So the range on this shotgun is 50 feet because it is rifled. Yeah. Um, at 50 feet, you're shooting at disadvantage, um, but it does um, 4d4. At 40 feet, similarly, you're at disadvantage, 4d4. At 30 feet, standard, you're at 6d4. 20 feet, 6d4. 10 feet, 8d4. And again, you crit on an 18, but only at 10 feet. Yeah. So that was at 10 feet, it was 8d4 crit on 18, yeah? Mm -hmm. Does anything happen at adjacent? <laughs> Evisceration. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, it, it, it hurts a lot if you're adjacent. Um, so yeah, damage profile is based on the range, plus your proficiency, plus four. It is a plus four shotgun. Oh. And this benefits from the gunner feet. So, I can't it's, a case that one. Of, it's a case of take out spent shell, put in new one. Spent shell, bang. Bang. Okay. Yeah. So essentially, it's, essentially it's a slam fire shotgun. Yes, it is exactly a slam fire shotgun. Cool. Now, bear in mind that it shouldn't take too long to put all this together, but it's in its component parts because no one can see it. it Exactly. Which means, unfortunately, your blades and your hammers and all that, they're going to have to remain here. Which is a bit of a problem. So, who gets what is up to you. Any preference? You take all the guns, I'll just keep this ball away from you. Fair. Hey, Calfan, I think there's something I can do with you as well. Tell you what, if you give me about two hours with you, I'll, uh, I'll make a coffee and I'll fix you something up that you can uh, sort people out with. <laughs> Just in case, you know. Thank you. And two hours pass as he works on your... your I guess, is Calafar right-handed or left-handed? What does it matter? Um, I've always seen him with the shield in his left hand. So he is right-handed. Yeah. So, to your arm, he basically adds a, um, it's concealed still, mm. but if you tap the elbow, essentially a spike shoots out. Mm -hmm. A steel spike, solid steel spike. Um, and that thing will do... So your proficiency bonus, all that stuff is added to that. That will be a... Um, I'm going to give that the profile of a javelin. So that's okay. going to be D, that's going to be a D6, but it will benefit from all your standard stuff. That's cool. I will just keep javelin on there and then, like, not yeah. use the warhammer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm in a much better situation going in there. If I hit them with inflict wounds i can still you can punch you can you can punch someone and still do 3d10 damage <laughs> yeah you, yeah you can you can punch someone and smite them even yeah. like you're you're in a you're in good shape um i might have to do something with smite because inflict wounds seems so much better mm -hmm. you, you guys come back to me you guys come back to me i think smite might benefit from critting I think that's the thing. It does. I think it does. You, could, you double damage on smite as well if you crit. Yep. So you yep, which, you can stack a stupid number of dice and then crit. And because you can select to apply smite after you know what you roll, you can mm -hmm. wait until you crit and then just do a stupid amount of damage with it. You that's the advantage. Mean, you would just as, cut, as my paladin character, I um, one shotted a large skeleton snake monster. <laughs> that yeah, was trying to attack. That was trying to attack my gnome friend, and fuck that thing. So I just yeah, bang. Because all you do is you off. hit, you crit, and you just you you use it at your highest available spell slot to roll the most number of dice, knowing it's going to double it. Or yeah, you've just done like ludicrous amounts of damage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Aliens when they hit hard, they hit like a fucking truck. <laughs> they do. 
Right, gentlemen, Finally. any any questions about any of those gadgets? No, I think I'm good. This is ten feet. Ten. Ten feet. Ten feet. Ten feet. Yes, be, be bloody careful. If you've got that thing, be bloody careful. Don't push that button. Thank you. Unless you want to throw it. If you do push it, you've got three seconds to chuck it away. Very well. Well, gentlemen, in that case, you can draw up your plan to go in there and uh, go in there at your leisure. Are there any times when there are particular services that take place where it's more likely to be busy or quieter? I mean... They have services at midday, they have services at six in the morning when the forage is light. Apart from that, steady stream of worshippers in and out. At least okay. when I was there. I'm thinking it's best to try and get in when there's less people around, maybe? It may help, but I don't imagine the, the haze will be in the pews. No, we buried in the, probably somewhere deeper on the ground. Take me in, wherever they... I imagine you'd be worth quite a lot to them, so they'll probably take you to a pretty deep part of the system. How do we pretend? The question then would be, who do you pretend to be, Gracchus? Uh, How about you um, pretend to be him? And he sort of nods to Brock. Now they know me. They know his face. I know they know him. But he's not on, he's not on a war path, is he? Uh, but, well, they, but, but in... And the reason, basically, they're on the wall. They know. I don't think that's a good idea. They know, they know I know where Brock is, which means if they see Brock, then assume, they'll assume it's to do with what I'm doing. Do you have any friends who worshipped it as well? Hmm. He knows. It's anyone I know, right? Anyone you've seen. That's how this guy's self worked. I think I can be. Uh, there's a certain tiefling. I imagine they weren't asked too many questions of to see him around. Could it be a certain purple tiefling? It might well be. I like your thinking. I know. He, I know he's a runner for the Delanos. And it's like the question of gift that comes from one of their own. Probably not. And you know his demeanour. Sounds good. Well, gentlemen. Good luck to you. Hopefully, we have friends in high places. I guess we'll find out. I guess we will, ladies and gentlemen, bodies of water, because we'll finish there. So, like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Hopefully next week, um, when we it record, won't be a shit. Zoom won't be a shit. So, um, fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen, bodies of water. I hope you've been able to hear me okay. Again, I apologise for the nonsense. Um, but uh, take care of yourselves. You can find me at Matt Waterhouse Author on Minds. Find me somewhere on Minds too. I'm still not there. Take care, everybody. Stay, stay safe. See you later.